Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about the seven things that I absolutely love about my Tesla Model X. Now, a couple weeks ago, I put out a video that talked about the seven reasons why the Tesla Model X was bad in winter conditions. That went over like a lead balloon. <laughs> a lot of people didn't like that video, but I still stand by all of my points. I think they're all still valid and accurate, except for one. There was one point that I was wrong, unfortunately, and that was the heated side view mirrors. I had looked all through the manual and I couldn't find anything about those heated side view mirrors. It wasn't in the climate section. It wasn't in the side view mirror section. Nada. So after a few people had said that if you use the rear defroster, it heats the side view mirrors, I decided to look at the description for the rear window defroster. And lo and behold, there is one sentence that says, if you use the rear defroster, it also heats the side view mirrors. I didn't know that. I'm told that I guess some European cars have it that way, but I've never had a car that had it. And uh, it just wasn't very clear in the manual. But anyways, now that that's out of the way, I have something else that I wanna show you guys. A friend of mine made this for me. And I'm wondering if you guys like it, if there's more people who might be interested in them. This is obviously a Cybertruck and it is a bottle opener. I'm thinking about making them available for my Patreon supporters. I'm just wondering if any of you guys like this, if you would be interested in something like this. They aren't cheap, unfortunately, so I have to figure that part out. This one is just made out of regular steel and it's clear coated, so it shouldn't rust. The surface of it does show like a little rusting before I could clear coat it. I'm just wondering if any of you guys like this, if you think this is something that maybe I should offer for Patreon supporters. He could also make them out of stainless steel, but it's significantly more expensive. So I don't know, let me know in the comments below what you think, is this thing cool or not? <laughs> all right, I guess that's all, that's all I wanted to cover. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, but here we go with the seven things that I absolutely love about my Tesla Model X. So the number one thing that I love about this car is this front windshield. This windshield is amazing, it's huge, you can see everything. It's great for sightseeing. You can look straight up and see everything above you. Right now, it's unfortunately just super cloudy, so it really just doesn't do it justice, but this window is amazing. I've read a lot of people online are concerned about the heat and the, and the sun just beaming right down on you. My wife was concerned about it. I don't personally think it's an issue at all. I have sunglasses that I move up or down depending if the sun's in my eyes. You do have these, which actually work surprisingly well. So you can put these wherever you need just to block the sun. It's pretty cool. I really like it a lot. It also does come with a screen that you can put right up here. Mine is still in the original packaging. I've never even used it. I don't see the need, but I think the windshield is one thing that everybody can agree is pretty cool. Number two are the Falcon Wing doors. I love these doors. This was the second wanted to buy this car. I really wanted to have easier access to get in here and get my son. And this just gives you so much room. Now I'm 5'11 and I still have a few inches above me. You do have to be careful if you're holding your little one so their head doesn't bump. Thankfully, Caleb's hasn't, but just to warn you guys about that one. And you just have so much space. You can go right up over top and when you come in here, you can just drop them right in here. It's just so convenient. In a normal car, there's gonna be a roof line here and you don't have to hunch over and try to get in there. It's just convenient and you have lots of space all around you. And you also get a little protection from the rain or snow, which we unfortunately get a lot of in Ithaca. But all in all, I do love these doors, but that's it. On to number three. All right, for me, number three is the seat quality. This seat is just so comfortable. I've put so many miles on my car in six months, partly because this seat is just so comfortable. So this is a 2019 Raven Model X. I've heard they tweaked the seats for 2020. I don't know exactly how they differ. I heard they have a pocket behind the seat. I don't know if the actual seat is any different, but I can say with my 2019 Raven, these seats are amazing. And it's not only just the seat, a lot of times a car manufacturer will use cheaper materials around you. So I'll show you this. It's really quite soft, it's really comfortable. And obviously when you're driving, your arms have to go someplace. And I just really love the position of my left and right arm. I'll move the camera over here. This one is really nice. You can slide this 
and it's just at a perfect height for me and then of course if it isn't you can still raise or lower the seat there's a lever right here on the side you can go down go all the way down <laughs> i just dropped a few inches and so now at this point i feel like the elbow positions are a little too high for me but i think you'll find that if you buy one of these no matter what your height you will find a position of this seat to match exactly where you are comfortable. These seats are so adjustable. You're gonna love them just like I do. Another point I wanna add is that I've had a lot of issues with sciatica in the past and car seats really seem to matter when it comes to sciatica pain, at least for me. And with this car, after driving, I have I think like 17,000 miles on this car. It has never been an issue. I've been so comfortable. I've been on long road trips as you guys have seen if you watch my videos and my back has never bothered me. I've been super comfortable the entire time. So in my opinion, I think you're gonna love the seats. So by now you guys probably all have heard of autopilot and if you're here, you probably know what it is. But this is also one of my top things that I really love about this car and I really didn't think I would. So right there, it's saying apply slight force. So what I do is just give the steering wheel a little nudge and you always have to be alert, of course, and be ready to take over. But this is one of the features that I really didn't even think I was gonna care that much about, and I love it. I use it every chance I can. It's absolutely amazing to have. It makes long trips so much easier, so much less fatigue. It makes driving this so easy. And again, I really didn't think I was gonna care, really gonna need this. I came from my 2014 Toyota RAV4 that didn't even have radar cruise control. My 2012 Toyota Prius plug-in did, and that was really cool. But this is so much more than just the typical laser cruise control. This is just the whole thing. It does all the steering. It's amazing. I can't even imagine what full self-driving is actually gonna be like, but I'm loving this feature alone. And I can honestly say, even if you don't think you care, even if you don't think you'll need it, I'm willing to bet that you probably will use it and you'll probably end up loving it. Number five is the all-wheel drive system and the overall driving dynamics of this car. Now, I know it's not a sports car. It's a big electric SUV, but I've tossed this thing around some corners and it handles great. It's that low center of gravity that really helps keep this car stable. I used to really be into SCCA racing. I had a Honda S2000 and I was very much into just pushing a car to its limits, taking it around a track. And this Tesla Model X, is no slouch. I mean, it's not especially fast, unfortunately. This is not the performance version. This is the long range, regular old Raven Model X. It supposedly gets 4.4 seconds, zero to 60. I don't even really feel like it quite gets that. But aside from speed, handling is just excellent. I still have the stock OEM tires on this car, nothing special, no performance wheels, obviously. But I've been very pleased with how it handles around turns, even in wet and crappy conditions. If you guys watch my videos, you know I live in upstate New York and we get a lot of snow and this thing has handled everything like a champ. It's gotten through all kinds of snowy conditions. I've never once been scared or had any issues with sliding or slipping. I absolutely love driving this car. No matter what condition it's like outside, it can handle it. Number six is interior space. There is a ton of room in here. This is definitely a larger rear cargo area than my Toyota RAV4 EV. The rear is shaped a little bit differently, but it slopes down up here. So it's not quite as squared off. So it's getting taller items back there is a little difficult, but all in all, the interior space is still better than my Toyota RAV4 EV. If you know that car, know that body style, it was hugely popular. That will help give you an idea of how much room is back here. Also, if you watch my air mattress review video, that'll show you me sleeping back here. And that was super comfortable. I love that air mattress. It's actually still inflated back there. But go ahead and watch that video. Maybe I'll put an iCard up here and you can see how much room is back there. I loaded this car up for our trip down to Austin, Texas a few weeks ago, and it had no problem. You have tons of storage space. You have space up under here. Of course, you also have the frunk. I have the lower cargo area back there. Definitely plenty of room all around for your stuff. And that brings us to number seven. And number seven is data. I love having all of this data. With my 2014 Toyota RAV4 EV, that is something that was severely lacking. We had zero data. They didn't, they didn't give us anything. But with this car, 
I'll start off with the display that's right here. And of course, these are changeable. So you can customize your dash however you want to. I choose to have the watt hour gauge right there. So you can see, let me zoom in a little bit. So that's the gauge I have right here. I love having that so you can just actively see as you're driving what your history looks like and how much power you're currently using. So right now I'm not driving, but you can see a little bit of orange there and that's just because I have my heat on and it's using some power. And then we'll come over here and you have even more data. Right here it shows the same graph that you see up there, but it also adds some more trip information. This is the state of charge you're at currently. This is what the computer predicts that you'll be at when you get to your destination. This is how many miles you've been driving for along your entire trip. You can also go back to consumption. You can change your history right here. Uh, you can also change your projected versus average range right there. I don't usually mess with any of these. I pretty much keep it just right like that. The trip planning feature, it's not perfect as I've said in a couple of my road trip videos and that's why I also have this phone up here and this phone runs Google Maps for me that also gives me the ability to watch for speed traps and other stuff. So I really like having both of these but still the data and functionality that you have with the computer systems of this car is amazing. Hands down it's the best in the industry. I have not seen any other car that even comes close to this. Another thing that I love is that you can actually add destinations and change things as you're driving which I think is really cool. I know it's kind of a safety concern. For example with my Toyota RAV4 they don't allow you to enter any addresses or search for anything if you're moving. So I'm very thankful that Tesla allows that with the system. All right, that's it for my seven. I do have a bonus one for you though. I didn't include it in the top seven because it's not technically the car. So I can't really say it's the top eight things that I love about the Tesla Model X, but here is number eight. Supercharging, hands down. This was the number one reason I wanted a Tesla. I love road trips. I love just picking up and going. And with other EVs, it's not really possible. I've tried. I mean, look at my old videos with my Toyota RAV4 EV. I've taken longer road trips. I've failed quite a few times. But with a Tesla supercharger network, it's amazing. You can go anywhere in the world, practically. But here in North America, you could drive from New York to California without a problem. So hands down, supercharger network is number eight, even though really it was pretty much the number one reason I wanted a Tesla in the first place. I'm so glad we have that. Love it. But there's my top seven plus my bonus number eight of reasons why the Tesla Model X is actually a great car. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you on the next one. Stay positive, guys. If you've watched my previous videos, <laughs> you're funny. This is my son, Caleb. Uh, he's awesome.